collaboration between researchers in the UK and Germany has resulted in a non-cuttable material being developed by mimicking forms found in nature. I think what is quite amazing to me is that uh, we achieved this with a very light material. So the material is six times lighter than steel, it's mostly air, and it's basically physics. By studying grapefruit skins and abalone shells, they found a way to make a lightweight but robust material. I was inspired by the abalone sea creature that has a very hard shell. And the shell is extremely hard, even though it uses relatively soft building blocks. So it's like, you know, you live in the sea, you have this uh, soft bricks, that's all you have. And now there's a shark and other predators that want to eat you. So the nature has to come up with some defense mechanism with these weak ingredients, otherwise it won't survive, right? And, and the nature arrived at this uh, interesting layout that is basically like a stack of hexagonal tiles that are interlaid with soft uh, organic polymer. So it's this contrast between rigid and soft. Grapefruit skin is another example when you have this sponge within a sponge within a sponge, this kind of hierarchical structure. And uh, that was all observed by my colleagues in Germany, by Professor Bichrik Polacek, who studied grapefruit skins. And he was fascinated that in biological structures you have layers of hierarchy. And at each level you will find some organization, some structure, it's not random. So with grapefruit skin you will see first the cellular material, then you will recognize that the walls are made of tubes, and these tubes are hollow, and then if you look at the fibers, they are not the same fibers, and if you look at the fiber structure, there's something more complicated there. The material is named after the shape-changing mythical god, Proteus, and is made of ceramic spheres within a cellular, metallic structure. When power tools try to cut through it, the vibrations cause the material to become even tougher. We need the vibrations to get fast movement at the interface, very high velocities there. And this fast velocity is coupled with the strain rate effect of particulate matter, give us hardness that is much higher than the hardness of the disk. So in a way, I guess we are cheating in a way, right? We are using cheap materials, but producing like a chain reaction in such a way that, that uh, the, the outcome is, is this very highly resistant material that is, I think, relatively inexpensive and light. I use this analogy of sandbags in the war zones, that you see sandbags that are used for protection for bullets. Uh, so soldiers hope, you know, this will give them safety uh, from, from fire from the enemy. And bullet is basically traveling at 700 meters per second, so it's traveling very fast. And somehow, you know, it gets stuck in the sandbag. But if you take a stick and you poke through the sandbag, you can poke it through, right? You know, with a sword. So somehow particulate matter doesn't like fast motion, like strain rate. It's called a strain rate effect. So the faster you try to run, through the crowd of sand particles, the harder they get. So far we have not been able to cut it with conventional tools like angle grinders or power drills or water jet. So in that sense it is non-cuttable. And these properties are important for security applications, for protection from forcible entry, uh, for bike locks, for protective gear, maybe for factory workers, for shoulder pads so they don't get injured with an angle grinder in the factory. And the way I see our work is we, sh we show the principle of vibrations, of strain rate effect, but the principle is sort of material independent. If you want, you can replace the basic ingredients. As long as you get the same kind of chain of events, it's fine. But I also think there is a deeper dimension to this. I feel like using this bio-inspired architecture, we defeated conventional engineering approach. 